So, anyways, we had technical difficulties, which we all alluded to. I should have paid attention to Nir when she said, you know, you guys shouldn't be talking about deepfake sets for the elite or something like that. And I'm like, well, whatever. <laughs> Apparently, Jeff Bezos and Google were listening to us and fucking rat fucked our, our live stream. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that but, 100%. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> There's not yeah, user error. Yeah. Definitely not user error. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's never user error. Yeah. <laughs> Corporations are after us. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so we, we went straight into paranoia today, but, <laughs> but but we did have fun last night, and I think let's just wrap up real quick or have a rundown of the highlights of what you're doing, what mine's gaming, and then maybe even highlight some of the, the, the more interesting things that we came up with and actually moving those those things uh, further. So, um, basically, I guess right now, let's, um, what is your new project? Oh, oh, we're doing it now? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, um, for, for the new project, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna start interviewing, uh, gamers and, um, you know, giving them a copy of the video for the recording of the interview uh, with their gaming footage in the background that they provided. So you're gonna have to have an upload to Vines to do that, but we're gonna start interviewing gamers with you guys and get a, at least a show every month with one to two gamers on it. So and get, and get that original content out. We have. Uh, I know we were talking about that. Uh, I was playing with that. Uh, the VR thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I think it would be. You know, it would be really interesting to have like uh, a place like if we could do that kind of where there's like a computer in the in the 360 degree the main 360 degree photo that you could click on and then all the videos that we've done or even if it was like a little uh, pinball machine or something that you clicked on and all the videos that we these gamers it's pop like up a, it's like a virtual like arcade room and then like you you pick on each little video and it's like its own little little console and you're like oh there's a video and you click it and you go yeah. to it yeah, yeah. So you could have like a little little VR spot for like the Imaginarium videos that you did with other people and then you have the gaming area where they click on all the gaming videos pop up and it's all a VR experience. That'd be crazy, dude. Yeah, dude. We, we gotta do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, just like what you're doing with already, what you're playing with in, in the with 360 image and you're just putting like a placeholder of, you know, the, the Minds Gaming image and then the Imaginarium image, but like that's just placeholders, and then like that becomes the portal to whatever video it is, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we yeah. just go around the gallery, like you know, this is like uh, Minds Gaming Arcade, and it, like has all your videos, and then like go into the Imaginarium like lounge, and then like it's there. Everywhere. Yeah. All the you know, Imaginarium stuff and pictures. You can go into the little lounge and yeah. it'd be like you can you can set it up so you click one of these pictures and you go into a different room even because yeah. it's built off of an, an escape room kind of idea. So you can click one of these pictures and it'll take you to another room and then you can be in a whole different area. So you can have like a couch set up in the other room and where you're watching your infinite you know infinite Imaginarium videos and then you can have it, it's so. We should build like a weird game where it's like, <laughs> like it's just okay. There's this this book that I love. It's called the the Luminous Trilogy, and it's by Robert Anton Wilson. But anyways, there's a scene in the book that always stands out in my head where the main character is like running away from like some you know like the elite is after him. He, he stumbles into like the Illuminati, and now he's getting chased by them. And so he goes and he kind of like hides out at this warehouse. But then, like, things start, like, 
movie and I need serious weird sounds. Fuck, did I take acid? Like, I feel like I'm on acid. He's like, I don't remember ingesting it. Like, they fucking drugged me and he's like getting all paranoid. And then, like, everything starts like changing around him. And then at the end of the scene, it finds out that he wasn't on acid. It was just people playing a game on him. Like, they were making the walls change and having sound put into the thing. So it was like a whole sonic experience that like made him have an acid trip, but he didn't ingest acid. And I'm thinking, let's do the same thing in VR. Just <laughs> like a kaleidoscope of, of mirrors. Like, you know, you go into like one room and, and then you have to like figure out how to like get into the next room, but it's not that obvious, you know? Oh, yeah. And, and the other thing, like, if they ever get the, uh, the embedding or the, like, um, an RSS feed running on here, we, we can have our own little, you know, like, we could have a computer in, in one of the rooms that you could log on to Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that would be so funny. That's how, like, the game ends, right? The game ends with you, like, yeah. going back into Minecraft and then you come back yeah. to the other side. Like, hey, hold on, this is this how it started? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like, you go into the game to only come out of the game on the other side. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Dude, that, and maybe this is why I'm like getting obsessive of the the warping, uh, the pipe warping sound. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I just did this video, it has like the evolution of that, and it was like, we gotta come up with like our own sound to go like into the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, like, just like sound effects, you know, like when you're like watching a movie or whatever, like sound like helps to like set the like the mood or whatever. And then, mm. especially if you tie it to like classic sounds, like I think that like invokes like you know this kind of like like you know when I hear like Mario and like like Zelda, like the old ones, that like it brings me back to like when I was like so excited for like Christmas and my grandpa bought me, you know. Nintendo. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you play it forever and then, like, those sounds, like, stay in your head. All <laughs> this. <laughs> Seriously, I think this, this just, I think we, we did record it uh, at the end when we started just, like, reminiscing about gaming and stuff like that. No, oh, yeah. I, I think, think that was a great spot. Yeah, definitely. yeah I think that, that's, like, the, the power of like what you do not only like you know to like highlight their gaming and, and, and sort of things but like if you guys you know those little like reminiscing about you know connections that you made to games and what yeah. that meant to you is, oh, is powerful that's definitely, definitely important and, and a lot of people have those you know there's there's always that one word game you grew up with that you loved and yeah. that is what you play like my kid's game right now is Roblox that's his game okay, yeah that's his game yeah, yeah like, if, if he's playing the game, he wants to play Roblox, or you know, he'll go play on his own way, but like, he loves that game, and I know 10 years from now, he'll still remember playing yeah. Roblox, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the cool thing, is like, you know, like, every step of the way, it was like a different game, but uh, like what you're saying, that like, I connected to, like, you know, first it was like, classic Duck Hunt, Mario, I got like all into that. And then, like, oh, I, I actually, this is the funny thing, it, it kind of goes with what Near Miss was saying last night, it's like, but I had that with my mom. My mom, like, started playing, like, my Game Boy, and she was playing uh, Dr. Mario, and I was like, oh, that, that shit's pretty hard, and, like, she was doing pretty good. I'm like, ah, I can't let my mom beat me. So I'm there, I'm like, spending, like, like, all night and all day, like, like, playing it and getting really good at it. And then I'm like, yeah, I beat a high score. Like, it took me, like, three, four days, and I felt really good. And then the next morning I wake up and then she has like two high scores on there. I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> it's, it's funny because like I used to help the kid out on his games. Like uh-huh. when he got stuck and stuff, I used to help him out. Now when he gets stuck, I, I can't help him anymore. I have no idea what's going on. It's like, I don't know. It's just like, I have no Isn't idea how to play this game. But yeah, it's, a, it's so, crazy. That was like the, the interesting thing, what I noticed with Frosted Roads Rhodes kids. So there, yeah, I think I told this. Uh, there's there's a three three year old that ten, uh, twins and, and twelve. So the the twins were playing like all these like weird little, um like trial games. Like there was like weird Marvel Universe uh 
little Lego game that was like in beta. Like they were just like huh. hopping around, like playing these like weird beta games. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, dude, that's yeah. dope. <laughs> beta games are, are a ball sometimes, man. Especially if you can find like a glitch in one, then then you then it's all over, man. You're just you're just going at at that glitch forever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I found so- I found uh when I first started playing um uh, I think it was like Halo Two or maybe, maybe it was Halo One, but I started playing that and there was a glitch on one of the match on one of like the co op maps that we did. Yeah. And that where you could go under the map and shoot up at people and kill everybody on on the map. <laughs> 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 so like I found this glitch and I just go down there every time we start a, a match on that map I'll just run to that glitch and jump in it and then just, just be on the bottom of the map shooting people and everybody get pissed on your computer I was like no I'm not here I just played this map a billion times yeah, right <laughs> <laughs> that, that was like uh, me with uh, 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 double set like, I would play that so much but like there was like this one weird little area I forgot what map it was but like you couldn't really see it like as long as you like you kind of go in the corner and you like get hit in <laughs> like yeah. just like weird little things like that you, you learn from just like fucking playing forever <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially the shooting yeah. games like that's what that's what made me stop playing because like I was I didn't do any of the, the first person shooters on my computer. I mostly played uh, strategy games, you know, like um, StarCraft and, and all those other, like, weird Stronghold games. was my favorite oh. strategy game of all time. <laughs> yeah, so I, I wasn't playing first person shooters. Then I go over to my friend's house, like, this is like two years of, like, not really playing those first person shooters. And I go to his, and he has, you know, Xbox and he's playing Halo. And I'm like, oh, let me, let me try this. I never played it. He's like, you never played this? I was like, no. And then, like, he just fucking owned me. I was like, dude, this is oh. not fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, you don't even let me get to, like, walk around the map. Like, this is not cool. <laughs> like, how I'm getting, like, I can't even, I don't even know what the map is. <laughs> and he just, like, just sniping me. I'm like, dude. I remember going to parties in high school, and uh-huh. they all have a TV set up, and all, like, all my, they, they used to play Tekken on the TV, like, while people were um, drinking okay. and playing beer bomb and stuff. So I used to always play Tekken with everybody, but whenever I came first came in, people were sitting around Tekken. I'd always be like, "Oh, I got next game." People would just leave. They'd be like, "No, nah, I'm good." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna play with somebody. Yeah. It's, it's, always be like the, it's always like the new person that's always that just happened to stop by the party. They're like, "Oh, yeah, I'll play you." <laughs> yeah. Just get <kidding>. old. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. The- had of of like the fighting games, I used to love all, all that like uh, Marvel versus Capcom and all that kind of stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah. Marvel vs. Capcom, man, that was good. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think anything will ever beat Mario Smash Brothers. So the original Mario Smash Brothers was amazing. Like that was the first of its kind of game. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that. I think they like expanded, you know, what what was so cool about like arcade games. Like that's why I was mentioning um, those four, four uh, person. Like they're all the same basic layout, but it was you know just yeah. insert like the character of the Ninja Turtles or or the Simpsons mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Yeah. It's like the same worlds, but just like different things. But like that experience of like competing with each other but also like you know like working with each other in in, in like the same space is like you know when they do oh, the Mario okay. parties and stuff like that is like that's 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 where you know a different type of engagement that's what I've been noticing with the, the those little kid games like the kids the kids that they were playing they played this, that one have you ever seen that um uh, No Man's Sky oh yeah 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 Dude, that world is so big, and like the whole point of it is you're just like exploring, like you're just like setting yeah. up things and like gathering mm-hmm. material and like trying to build a better like hyperdrive. Like it's it was like so interesting to like see him play. Yeah. Oh yeah, when that game first came out, it was supposed to it, it was branded as a never ending game. Remember, I don't know if you remember that. 
But like all hyped about that, I was like, "What? What do you mean a never-ending game?" That, like, I, yeah. I, I remember Zelda took thirteen years, but I've never played a <laughs> never-ending game. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want that. And then, and then, like uh, two weeks after it came out, I watched the video of somebody like going all the way through it. And I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> so much for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's the thing is. Well, going back to something that we said last night that's important is like once you engage with certain things like with like gaming or or these other technologies like what I said about video editing, you learn that how how it actually works, and so you know a never ending game it has to be contained in something like even no, though right. it as expensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you want can't. you want that spark. You're like you want yeah. it so bad, you and it. you're like, oh yeah, and then you're like, oh yeah, that's not even possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's not possible, even though you want to believe it is. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. that's cool. Like, I'll like, be like. That's why I want to start getting into this uh this VR stuff, man. Like that that really inspired me to try to see how good I can code a VR, like. Because yeah. I've played it from a little bit here and there, like, you know, just to mess around with it. But I've never actually tried to, like, build an experience. You know what I mean? In VR, like, I've played with the code a little. And, I, you know, I've seen what I can. I can put pictures here and stuff like that. Yeah. But I've never actually tried to build it out. Like, And that would be really interesting. I, I was talking to uh, Corey last night about that. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so I told him about glitch. I was like, "Yeah, go go make a glitch account." He was like, "Yeah, I'll make a glitch account and get on your team, uh, you know, this week or something, and we, yeah. we can we can try to work on something." And, and I think yeah. later, you know, this is our our uh, research and development team of our our uh, VR <laughs> imaginary. Yeah, right, right. It's gonna be you, oh. me, and Corey, and at least this is the the start of it because yeah. What what I'm thinking, especially what you oh one one thing that Corey said was when we were talking, he's like, oh, it's a shame I haven't played with with AR or VR yet. <laughs> like, yeah, just yeah. the disappointment in itself is like, oh, I, oh, should, yeah. I should be doing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I <would> just, <laughs> and then so when when we're just talking now, like I think that escape room or like type of uh, mystery game that like leads back to minds. Is something that we can seriously like do? Like, oh yeah, I think it's it's very possible. Like, yeah. it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be really basic to start. Yeah, like, you, yeah. you saw the layout that I did, and that's just that's just me messing around. But I, the, the layout might be basic to start. But once we get our our skills up and we can mm-hmm. start doing cool things inside the VRs and have separate rooms and all that, I mean, yeah. it, we can make that really expansive. Yeah, and see, that's that's the thing. It's like not this like. It's a more expansive, like, linear uh, network of, like, how you're going to tell the story. Because, you know, you remember there used to be, like, Choose Your Own Adventure um, books? Like, yeah. I think, I think Goosebumps did a couple of them, but, like, it was, like, a whole little trend. And, like, you know, you go to a page, and then it says, where do you want to go? Do you want to go through the door, or do you want to go to the forest? And then it, like, splits the story, right? That's, that's the yeah. And, like, doing it like that, and telling a story like that where... Whatever it is, is like, you know, like, see, this is where I think my, my own little weirdness comes into play because once you guys have like the world and I, I could help and I'll, I'll actually get like Curry to like more do the design because he's a lot better. At but, anyways, <laughs> but anyways, like my skill set would be like when we get those portals, like I can make like actual visual portals that we could like go into. <laughs> <laughs> like make yeah. it look like you're going in there and like put the sound so like it feels like you're going in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was I was showing uh I, when I was got that site up last night with the little VR example to show you. I was uh my girlfriend looked over at my phone and she was like, What are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm just messing around with this and she was like, That looks like a VR and I was like, Yeah, she was like, Oh, let me play <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're just fucking around with some VR. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like what? Well, you, you can't play anything right now, but yeah, yeah, I'll definitely let you play when we get it set up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that that is something that's like, 
and and see, this is what what like in in some disappointment when I talk to Doug, like even as far on the edge that he used to be, like he doesn't get like what we're doing like on the ground level. Like, yeah, there's all this like crazy stuff on mines, but like really, the real mines is the people that take open source like seriously. And, like the philosophy of open source is like, yeah, we could fuck around with anything. Like I remember getting on mines. And he said open source. So I'm like, okay, then I'm gonna start like pitching like features. Like I'm gonna start like, you know, like thinking. I remember when I saw the point system. I'm like, oh, this is like this is not gonna work. This is horrible. <laughs> like, how are we ever gonna turn this into something? And that was like my main thing that I focused on in the beginning. I was just like, oh, this point system is horrible. Like we need to get like a real like token system and make it like worth the value. And we're, we're like that was like my main like focus. In the Oh yeah, I remember all that when I first got on with the points, and uh, yeah. I told him the same thing. I was like, "What are we doing with these points?" Yeah. Like, like people were getting stuff. like thousands a day just by like fucking like clicking on everything. I'm just like, dude, dude this is gonna be bad. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I said, it's like, oh, well, <clears throat> when you have two hundred thousand points or whatever, well, yeah, what's the point? Was, what? yeah, Am I supposed to boost every single one of my posts now? <laughs> Yeah, people had like so many tokens that they got like tired of this shit. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you'd see like 20, 20 boosts in a row by the same person. You're like, how? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh man. Oh, <laughs> but that that was another thing that like kept me on mind was like you could it's it's slow progress, but you do see like them taking. What, what we're saying seriously. Like, oh, yeah. If it's yeah, a good yeah. idea, then they'll explore it and see, like, if it's feasible. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's definitely one thing I had to cut in on. Uh, who was that? Yeah. Yes, I think you yeah. said that. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, so they move slow, but but they 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 talk to you. No, they'll let you yeah. know their opinions on your ideas, which is probably the best thing about yeah. it. And I mean, that's powerful because you can't get that anywhere else. Like, you can't. no, no, no. I mean, I I can't think of another network that I can message a, a developer directly and they'll yeah. respond. With me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> and even for me, like I, I don't like contact Bill all the time, but. You know, the, the rare times I do, like, he gets back to me, like, real quick. Like, I had this, you know, uh, I, so in, like, Canary, they were having problems with uploading images, and then I've been getting these bigger images, so, like, they've been, like, not, like, uploading. And so yeah. I, was, I was fucking around with, with one of my images in a post, and it wasn't getting up there, and then I was, like, editing it, and then I, like, I deleted it, and then I put it back. So this was, like, a rapid succession of me, like, editing it, like, three times, and then, like, deleting it, and putting it up, and then it didn't work. And then, like, I deleted it again and I put it up again. And then I get an email. You got banned from mice. And it's like, problem, spam. And I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, damn, I got banned from mice. I didn't know that. And so, like, I even go to my account and it says, missing. I'm like, oh, this is bad. And it's like, right away, I go, hey, Bill, uh, I got banned from mice. <laughs> and like, can you fix this? And he's like, Jesus Christ. And he, like, fixed it right away. Like, he got back to me, like, in a minute. And then, like, fixed yeah. it. And he was like, can I see that email that you got? And so I sent him the email. And, he, and so, like, later, I just, like, messaged John. I'm like, just to say hi. And then, like, he's always been cool about the show and all this kind of stuff. And then John was like, oh, I'm sorry. I heard about it. You got banned. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were talking about it. Like, oh, we can't have this. And yeah. We can't just have people disappearing. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, it's not good. Especially, like, channels that are interacting, you know, like, real channels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Can't, can't bad those people. <laughs> they gotta, like, reparameterize those, those auto settings. Because, like, I remember even you, didn't you get, like, dinged a lot of times for, like, in the beginning, uh, when they were messing with that, like, um, for too, posting too much or, like, reminding? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my account got deactivated for, like, two days. Yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was it was really interesting, but it, like the first day, I was just pissed off. I didn't reach out to anybody, mm-hmm. and then the second day, I was like, "All right, maybe I should maybe I should contact somebody." <laughs> <laughs> I know, like you know, like you, and then I feel like this for my stuff is like, man, I put like too much work into it not to like to now to like just like say fuck it and give up on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> 
I was pissed at first, but I kind of want my content back. Yeah, so that's how I got over being hurt. Like, I want my shit back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Actually, that's a good way to end this add-on stream. <laughs> so we'll stop it there. Uh, so but that was, that was funny. <laughs> Having everybody be public to everybody, you know, not everybody wants that. And, you know, if you can, like, you know, restrict your, like, profile to your friends, I think that's going to go a long way. Yeah, I mean, I can see where you're coming from that, but here we don't, I mean, we don't really have friends, right? You know, I have a few friends here and there that I keep in contact with or I message all the time, but mo most of them are just subscribers that just are interested in content. I mean, I've, I've never understood the whole lock my profile thing. Can you join social media to for people to see your content? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. Like, that's the point. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying that I don't understand them and they don't understand me. So we can't, I don't know. I need like a Facebook whisperer to, to help me communicate with Facebookers so that we can do something. I also don't get making a pub, a private profile when you are on a platform that spies on you and sells your data to, um, a company that then uses artificial intelligence to figure out the best way to piss you off yeah. so that you will go out and storm yeah. the Capitol building. That's, that, have, like, that's like the crazy. massive irony of Facebook is that people uh, feel safer on it. Yeah, it's the most unsafe place. They yeah. post all their pictures of their kids and everything. And it's like constant, you know, when you think about it and, and it's funny, it's the ones that are like constantly posting pictures of the, their location, their Starbucks coffee their family pictures, which, you know, I've got nothing against them doing that. They're the ones that would be terrified of mines. Yeah. They're the ones that would, like, be on mines for about five minutes and go, oh, my God, I can't cope with this. It's just so ironic, isn't it? The debates of mines, and uh, uh, I think, like, Techlord's just, like, lost his shit one day, and it was, like, all pissed. Oh, yeah. Was, like, people were just posting pictures of, like, the, like, the most basic stupidest shit, and he's like, I don't want that on my feed. <laughs> Yeah. And he's remember going mad about like he's like I'm tired of seeing all these like weird pictures in my feed. I got I think he like took a break from mines after that. Like he was, yeah, you know he was like we should have had that. <laughs> and obviously the and the, and the big one the big kind of debate at the beginning was the block function as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like mm, that's that's still a big debate. So. I know yeah. that's good. that's going to be an all. I don't you know, know if we'll ever get to the, the bottom funny of thing that. Is like I I remember me and Gus Fighters. You know, it was during that that one show where he says I'll bring on the trolls, and he says that he has like this thing where <laughs> he's not going to block anybody and all this kind of stuff. And then mm. I, I was like, you know, I wouldn't say that, but I I personally have never blocked anybody or or, or unsubscribed to anybody. Like I I don't care. And then. I don't. I didn't do it, but I. I, w I think I did actually block Akana for a minute, and then I, un I unblocked her. But like, she was the only one, and <laughs> but, yeah, she was pretty bad. But then she got. What got me? I block, you know, spam channels and oh, stuff yeah, like that every block, once in a while. But mo are... mostly, it's it's hard. It's hard to block if you run a community because you you have to manage your groups. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. What if there's someone that like says something that you know is completely wrong and is misleading people and they delete your comments? Oh, yeah. I, I had to block after that. I was like, I can't look at this anymore because like yeah. I feel like powerless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the deleting of the comments. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I know what you mean. Because then it just makes you look like they can make you look like you're guilty of something if they can just delete all your interactions. It's like you just put it with something smart. <laughs> I mean, like, they need, I guess they need to have it because you have to be able to delete spam off of your stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I don't really know what the good answer is because I really don't like it when people delete my comments and then it makes them look good. And then if yeah. they block you, you can't downvote them. So that's how you get all these like anti Jew people who are like, it's the Jews. And they have nothing but yeah. like 123 upvotes. And it makes it look to the newcomer, it makes it look like everybody on Minds is an anti Semite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what well, you mean? One thing is like, you have to be able to control your content, but at the same time, you want 
other people express their point of view about your concept. Yeah, so it's kind of like a snaggle. I guess the good like thing really... is these days those voices are getting drowned out significantly. I'm seeing a lot less of that comparatively. Oh my god! So. Yeah, absolutely. It, like the whole minds, the way it flows now. When you compare it to like at the beginning, you know, sort of 2015 time you know right at the very start and and sort of into 2016 there is I agree with you Corey there's definitely a lot less of it a lot less of it and I think ultimately it's just a case of people having to just think well there's always going to be a situation where somebody doesn't agree with you I mean I suppose to argue the point you could be in a physical space with people having a debate and there could be a really difficult person that starts to twist everything that you're saying in the discussion so like not on a platform a social media platform but actually in the physical space you could be in a cafe so in a way that can always kind of happen it's just a case of just thinking oh well was that person I don't really care what that person mm -hmm. thinks of me anyway I don't really care you know and you kind of just have to move on from it because yeah I think with the spam thing you do have to have something there to sort of so, yeah, nothing's ever going to be 100% perfect. There's always going to be little, you know, there's always going to be a double-edged sword to everything um, that we do in a way. Yep. Yep. I mean, you just got to you gotta stay observant of what you're doing and how you interact with people. And, you know, I, I'm very particular of what, you know, uh, is is on my content and myself. Uh, I don't care if you're commenting on the com on the content. I'm I'm gonna leave it there. But if it's you know if it has something that's not related or just you just trying to be a smart ass about it, like oh you don't even know this. It's like uh, yeah I do. I'm saying this for a reason. I don't I don't care about your comments. <laughs> <clears throat> But it's, it's a tough spot. Yeah, and I, th I think, for like, me, if we keep for me, doing, focusing one, on our, like, things we, we thing do. that but... I've always done is, like, I really don't care what anybody's doing on mine, in a sense. Like, I don't really scroll through the feed. I don't, like, go and look for content. Because I'm more concerned about creating my own content. And then from there, like, when people engage with it, then I go and engage with them and I see what they're doing and if I like it or not. Uh, but really to the extent of like me just being focused on like you know it's it's weird like i don't reach out to that many people but like at and in a given time for some reason something says to reach out to a person and then it always kind of works out like even near miss like her just like randomly showing up today like i kind of like reached out to her a little little couple of days ago and then like it kind of like fits in an odd way like it gave a good weird dynamic to our discussion but it, it always seems to work out that way like for some reason i'm just like oh i'm gonna like reach out to this person and then like even with my, mine's gaming and like it seems to fit in like the same way like yesterday i was talking to michael about like his gaming and that, like he should do like like try that do this on mine's like why can't you like try to make something like that where you're doing on like another platform, like try to use Minds to do that. And then, you know, then Minds Gaming talks about his new project and I'm like, oh, those fit. <laughs> it always seems to work that way. Yeah, yeah, it was almost, that was a perfect collide. I was yeah. like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm on this. Um, they want to do that, yeah. I mean, we that's, that's what we're going for. So yeah, yeah. yeah definitely uh, together. You know, originally, when me and Gov Spiders were messing around with uh, Jitsi, because Gov Spiders found Jitsi first, we were looking for an open source um, video conferencing site, and when we were using it on the Jitsi site, and I think uh, you know if you use it straight from Jitsi, they had a, the the shared um, like document, like a shared notes, and we would like write our, our notes um, together as we we had like yep, yep, yep. yeah, and um, but there's this other Thing that we used for a short while it was called um mind maps or something like that but it was like a visual representation of like making notes and then they it, it kind of had it like um like a graph and you could start in the middle and then you like branch out your ideas but then with each tab you could uh tag like artwork or a link and so it, it's just like this hyper web of of thought um which i think for some some of us visual people uh, might be better for like 
you know, when we have these, because I, I want to keep on doing having like these creative uh, brainstorming sessions, because I seriously like from these discussions, like that the whole like what what we're like imagining what um you know VR or AR could be as like because let's build on that idea like let's keep on going out there because pretty soon if, if everything goes the way I think. I might be in a room with somebody who's in that field and who, who, so like if I could talk more intelligently about it and like pitch these wild ideas, but like back it with, with a little bit of like, you know, actual programming logic to it, then he'd be like, Oh, okay. That, those are pretty interesting ideas. And I'm like, and I, I know these type of people, they're going to be like, maybe you should talk to this guy. Cause he's doing something similar to, to what you imagine uh, what you're doing. And then now I'm going in, going to, the people that are actually like building this stuff and then i'm talking about my crazy stuff and then maybe they're like hey do you want to try this out like you seem like somebody that might be interested to like test this out and i'll be like yeah i'll, I'll test it out let's see it <laughs> i want to have like a duck uh not a dog a d-u-c-k a bird like a duck that lives on my screen that i can train it how to do things on mines like oh um okay every time you notice mines gaming pops up in a gathering then quack you know like a sort of a virtual assistant type thing going yeah. on like, yeah yeah but like it just lives on mines <laughs> and it just does like mine things and then like i can be gone and it can still be hanging out on mines like wreaking <laughs> havoc <laughs> <laughs> you know one of my more wild or extreme ideas that i probably still want to do is when you, when cory first told me about like doing a deep fake and he just like wanted to mess with it and then like later my mind starts going crazy and then i'm like because the way you were talking about it you're saying like you know it's going to be more like a puppet and you make it and then you have to like do your voice to it so now i'm thinking well, let's keep on expanding that earlier. Like, can we make the actual Satori D character a, like uh, a like living entity on mines? Like, can I like finally like give birth to Satori D and he like lives disembodied on on mines? And then you know, with all of like my poetry and my art, like he's out there. Like, you could like interact with him, and he's gonna be like saying all like weird stuff, like programmer B program, like it more. If more coders knew poetry, you know, more poets knew poetry, the world would be a lot better. Would it be like the, like your little bee man, your little yeah. sim block, like, like him, like but he kind of move him around and stuff? Mind. And then I could go and do other things and no longer have be possessed by this so um, weird entity. <laughs> I, I actually have oh. have a, a, a chat bot that I I've been training for like three years based off myself. So that's, that's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of this, and and I don't think uh, uh, Corey was there. But so when we're talking about like doing live events, and Meg first comes up with this, is she says, "Can we have like visuals playing in the background that like corresponds to our our talks?" And I said, "I yeah, like." I was, and I'm calling it the Beetlejuice function. So like, you know, we'll have like keywords and if we say it in like rapid succession of in, in our talk about like AR and then someone says AR and then oh yeah, AR. Then like we have a whole like uh, su subset of videos that correspond to that, that like get randomized and they play in the background. So then you have all this like really crazy like hyperspace or VR stuff playing in the background while we're talking about VR. And then if we switch topics to like poetry or art, then we have like corresponding images that go with it in the background. And so like we keep on going with that. And um, yeah, Corey. Um, yeah, they just have to do backgrounds or the... Would it be so, our individual backgrounds or would it be like kind no, of the main this, video? This is, I'm talking about background. like future live events where like we're in a, a space together mm. and we're having a discussion oh, okay, okay. and then the, the screens or the background corresponds to ours. So it's it's like Satori D's mixtapes in real real time. Um, yeah, that's what I'm so. That's cool. <laughs> And then my duck could totally crash your background. Yeah. I could train it, it like. It train it to hack us, and then it like goes through one of the portals, like 
Like if we start yeah. talking about like AR, then like all of a sudden a misnomer's duck comes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I was just thinking if we like trained our own like bots, like our own version AI versions of ourselves, they could get a bit above their stations and start like fully taking over, <laughs> doing things we didn't want them to do and stuff. We're like, hang on, I didn't train you to do that. Christ. <laughs> I know. I that's the whole thing about AI, but I think ultimately the goal is to upload our consciousness into the AI machine so that we become the AI, and then that way we gain immortality. Like that's what it's talking that's about in the Bible, right? Oh, for like our consciousness or our memories? Are we? Are we our memories, or are we more than that? That's the question. Consciousness is more than consciousness. I don't know. Well, all we are is information. So I think information is transferable. What about Except the subjectivity of that information, though, where the information is coming in? You have to have the biochemical reactions to have the feelings to, like, care about the information, but, right? Like, if you think of, like, being a live human, you've got a consciousness, which is, in, in a sense, it's information processing through the brain, like a biological computer. But after the human the physical human has deceased, um, what happens to the, the, the AI version of that human then? How does it carry on? Because obviously um, thoughts can be expansive in nature, like they can expand onto something else and something else and something else. So while you're alive, you can kind of program your consciousness at that moment in time to the AI bot, you know. But then after you die, what happens to, you know, how does it carry on? It, presumably, it just ends there until somebody else comes along and takes over and, and reprograms it or gives it something else. Do you know what I mean? It's like... No, we're going to figure out how to actually become the AI, but we're going to have to figure out bodies. We're going to have to start growing them in Petri dishes because otherwise well, we won't feel we, anything. They're already, the they're already mapping out the brain to upload. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah i mean that's i think that's what i so i'll live in my duck eventually after i die and i'm cryogenically frozen to preserve my body then right. eventually so my duck will I continue have, living like, in can i can i resurrect you as your duck can we can yeah we that's what right i now? want yes. okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna put up a, a contract on um what do you call it, the blockchain and I'll, I'll make that happen so um i'll make sure that you, you get reincarnated as a, a duck can, can you put it on JitLab? This will be a little robot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put it on JitLab. Brilliant. I love that. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, guys, we don't want these ver other versions of ourselves getting ideas above their station because it could be it could get a bit complicated. It'll be like Tron. We don't want that. You know, we don't want that to be happening. What you wanted. It's what you wanted. And it, there's 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 nothing worrisome about AI. It all runs <laughs> off of us. <laughs> a lot of people's fears are way overstated with AI. I I don't know. I I just love the concept of AI. People just don't you know. understand. I think enough about it. It just seems too freaky and scary to people, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and then and they get influenced kind of by Hollywood and some of the things that come out of there, and it's like there's always these kind of you know like tron there's always these sinister attachments because obviously in hollywood they've got to make a good story um and they've got to draw people into the story so then you know if everything's all going along really nicely in a hollywood movie it's not really gonna people aren't really going to be that into it are they so they've got to attach these uh sinister elements to it i think and, and people obviously get influenced by that and then yeah, you know yeah, like yeah. you're saying mine's gaming it's like we don't people don't know enough about it they're just going to get drawn into the kind of the fear-mongering element of it aren't they oh absolutely so just to... like you were talking about a uh, video editing earlier once you start doing it and you kind of take that mystery away and kind of you know try to build your own or teach your own you know, you'll learn really quick that all these fears are just way over it <laughs> we have to make sure that once our souls are uploaded to the internet and we exist on like a platform we have to make sure that we can't be owned like right now they'll do platform you if yeah. anything they don't like right imagine how hairy that will be when we live 
they own literally own your consciousness and deplatforming you means like i don't know turning you off or whatever they can do we have to guard against that somehow yeah and biological upgrades too like rushkoff says about you know <laughs> you get some type of implant and like oh damn is there like a free trial or something like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, <laughs> see, that's that's the interesting thing is like, you know, what we're, we're talking about uploading consciousness and all this kind of stuff. Um, I think what, what misnomer, uh, I mean, um, yeah, near miss uh, concept is, is a, like a weird little twist on a, a Black Mirror um, episode. So in, in Black Mirror, they're, they, it's like the afterlife and they're uploaded to like a server and then they, they, I think they they pay for like their like little arena and they kind of forget, but then like later they start exploring and then they find like their, like the limits of like their little container. And then like, I think that it ends with like the one wanting to like actually literally die. So it doesn't like keep on like reoccurring this kind of like loop that they're stuck in. Uh, but I like the part where like maybe, you know, in their life they start like talking about like, you know, we're actually in a, a uploaded into a, like a server and Jeff Bezos owns this and then they're like, eh, 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 you, you just been deplatformed, you've been deplatformed and then now you're like stuck in like a two bit like, uh, uh, like Pong type like uh, Atari version of it and you're just like, oh, I'm sorry, Jeff Bezos and then they're like, okay, you've been, you've been upgraded, you've been upgraded. <laughs> so have, have you guys seen the, uh, the, the series uploaded? No. No. Oh, uh, you guys would love it. Like, okay. uh, I think it's on on Netflix. Like, it's it's about this guy that um, and he he's he's in he's in a bad relationship or whatever, and like his fiance ends up killing him. But instead of just killing him, she uploads his consciousness <laughs> to this magical place where he lives with all these other people that have their up loaded consciousness and he's the whole time he's just trying to figure out how to get out of this place and go back to his body but he doesn't know that his head's cut off so <laughs> yeah. but it's a really it's really interesting uh, uh layout of how it all happens and like what it would be like and what you're be able to do and like their point of view on what would happen if you uploaded your consciousness somewhere but yeah i think the owning part is a really good point perspective to take like mm -hmm. that i mean decentralization would be mandatory <laughs> yeah that's that's what's so important about like breaking open the web like designing the these platforms and systems that they that there is no uh centralized um control because oh yeah yeah uh, uh, having having uh you know decentralization platforms is definitely I think where everybody's going to go to and start start trusting more because you, it's it's yours and you can still interact with other people that are on their own platform or you know the main platform or whatever but that platform is yours and it's never going away until you don't pay for it or whatever happens to it but it's it's yours you know and that's really important yeah i think that was like this early on idea and I guess now they're, they're, they're kind of doing it in that like pro version, but I remember early on, and I, I believe Imaginarium was the first one to test this out. It was the subdomains of, of minds. Do you remember that, Meg? I think, I think, uh, Corey would remember yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. yeah. I remember the subdomains. That was quite yeah, exciting, wasn't yeah. it? At the time. It was like, oh my God, you know, like we a, can have this know, whole, own, we like, little can have our whole social media network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of our own. <laughs> Yep, I remember my little subdomain. man. I had I had five people on there, man. It was great. <laughs> but like, How many did we have on there? I can't on ours. I can't remember now. Not, I was, it was we had about had six a, or seven, yeah. I think, or something. Yeah. And I think like that is like maybe um, you know either the pro channel or like some form of like group function of like where you know now because what was cool about this little subdomain when we were using it it was good to like do what we kind of do about like sharing our creativity but this is like brainstorming where oh i'm working on this 
this like uh, image and it may not be like ready to put on your, your real channel but like then somebody could be like oh that's pretty good like this is like what about if you do this or like or or audio or whatever and like that type of like little small area where you could post the video and then you could like um like I remember when we when I did that one um for for all the crazy minds like I had that up in in group for a while and I always uh Mac was probably the only one that that like kind of like did a back and forth and I added some of his video to it um but that was like a good exchange of like I put the video up there and then I, I had people like um who was it Brett I took stuff from Sex Death Rebirth Mac who else uh, oh Featured Humans there was like five or six people that like all um added stuff and and it like I opened up the editing process so like it was like a whole like two weeks of like me leaving it up there and then Mac said you should do this and then like I put that in there and I put it back up and then like Brett said, Oh, I have some more footage. Like put that in there. And so like that, like, you know, um, tied with like, uh, the matrix type of stuff where you could like send your files. Like that's going to be, I think where, cause I mean, we use other apps. Like we always use Slack and then for a short time we use other stuff, but that was like the major like crux of like, you know, we always say about like, uh, connecting, collaborating, and creating, but it was, it was yeah. and now it's better, but like, we still need better tools because like in the beginning it was, that was really hard to like, really try to create with people. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's, that, that's where the matrix is going to help is, is inner community and creation and, you know, and you can share docs and kind of yeah. go back and forth and edit and upload and re-upload and do whatever before you actually release it on, on the platform. That's going to be great for everybody, especially content creators. I mean, if you're a content creator, you're definitely going to need that. You know? And the, the, like even on a practical like simple thing right now like maybe like you know to do our blogs like we could just like hop in to group and then like do the blogs yeah. like, together and like keep that would be perfect yeah. yeah 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 it's gonna be that matrix is gonna be fantastic it's just gonna oh, yeah, it's gonna yeah, just yeah. be so good for so many things. Oh yeah, I can't wait to, to play with. Uh, you know, I, I already use it on, on side, but uh, you know, I don't have that many people to play with it other than Mossy and stuff. But uh, <laughs> you know, we played with the GT a little bit, and you know, I want to play with the big blue button. I want to play with a couple of the other sharing dock features they have on there and stuff. Yeah. It's it's going to be a really interesting atmosphere. Yeah. Well, um, I gotta get going. It was cool to hang out with everybody and. Um, I want to like, you know, just real quickly with Minds Gaming, um, we, we should, uh, stay in touch and, um, I'll start sending you, um, those, those, those images and files and, um, I'll start, um, probably like, um, so I, cause I, I already have the images and I'll probably like put together a little, um, like intro or like a little like thing. And from there, you could use that however you want. But um, okay. we, we, we'll we start working so, yeah, on, on stuff together because, you know, like, if you need, oh, yeah, definitely, need definitely. to do anything, like, as far as, like, real quick um, images or, or whatever, messing around with stuff, like, that's no like, I could do that real easy. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, before we get going, I just, uh, you know, if uh, you guys stuck through the whole, anybody stuck through the whole show, I just want to thank them. And, uh, you know, we do really appreciate you guys watching and listening to our bullshit <laughs> and uh, sticking with us. But we have a lot of good stuff coming up uh, with uh, Satori D and the Infinite Imaginarium. We're going to start doing, you know, uh, recordings for gamers and we're going to post those and you're going to get your own copy. So we definitely want to see some interaction on there. And uh, we'll, We'll get shows going probably next month, hopefully. Yeah. 